Hey everybody! Today's practice problem comes from Economics, 4th edition, by R. Glenn Hubbard and Anthony Patrick O'Brien. Today we're going to be doing Chapter 4, Problem Number 1.6. The problem asks the following. It says, A student makes the following argument. When a market is in equilibrium, there is no consumer surplus. We know this because in equilibrium, the market price is equal to the price consumers are willing to pay for that good. And then it asks to explain whether you agree with the student's argument. So let's think about this. And I actually like these types of questions because they're more of the, the thought exercise variety rather than just being procedural and sticking things, you know, having some numbers, sticking them on a graph, etc. So let's think about this. We have our normal supply and demand diagram. We can start there to think about what's actually going on. So it's probably helpful to start by thinking about a demand curve and a supply curve. And we know that our economic equilibrium is where the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded, and we just call that Q star. And we know that the market equilibrium price is going to be this price P star. Now the student's argument was that, well, this price is actually, since it's on the demand curve, that that's actually the maximum price that this group of consumers, this being a market demand curve, is willing to pay for this quantity of output. So he's saying, well, you told us the consumer surplus was willingness to pay minus the actual price. So it seems like given that setup, consumer surplus would be zero. Even though I know you gave me some rules about identifying a triangle and stuff like that, it seems sort of inconsistent with what we're talking about here in terms of the conceptual definition. Now, the student is not correct, not surprisingly, because of course what the student said is inconsistent with the definition of consumer surplus that we gave before, where consumer surplus is just the area below the demand curve above the price that the consumer pays and to the left of the equilibrium quantity or the quantity transacted. So we know graphically that our consumer surplus is represented by this triangle here, which is clearly not zero. That said, it's important to understand why. So yes, it's true. Let's say, just to make this a little bit more concrete, let's say that our equilibrium quantity here is 100. Maybe our equilibrium price is like five bucks. That that is true if I were to say this market is willing to pay a maximum of five dollars for a hundred units of output, that is in fact a true statement. But what's important to keep in mind is that the, just the fact that the market is not willing to pay more than five dollars for 100 units of output doesn't mean that no consumer in that market would have paid more than five dollars. All this is saying is that the marginal consumer, that this last consumer on the demand curve here, was only willing to pay five dollars. But this guy up here was willing to pay a lot more than five dollars. So we can think about this demand curve as actually giving what I call marginal willingness to pay, which just means the willingness to pay or the maximum that the, a consumer will pay, but for the marginal consumer that comes into the market. So if I were to look at the demand curve here, say this was a quantity of like 20, whatever price was at that quantity of 20 would be the willingness to pay of that 20th consumer, or if there aren't literally a one-to-one -one mapping between consumers and units, the marginal willingness to pay for that 20th unit. That that's not to say that the willingness to pay of all the units would be that amount as well. So while it might be true here that the willingness to pay of this marginal consumer, the willingness to pay for this marginal unit, for this 100th unit, might be $5, that doesn't mean that the willingness to pay for all of them is, it's just the $5 is the price lowering that was necessary to get that 100th guy into the market. So the surplus actually happens for 
all the customers who are actually willing to pay more than the market price, right? That we have a whole bunch of customers who are willing to pay more than $5 for this item that still got it at $5 because there was no price discrimination in this market. That the only guy who's actually getting a consumer surplus of zero is in fact this last guy, this marginal consumer. And hopefully this makes sense. You can go back and you can think about different items in your own experience where you look at it and there's a price labeled on it and you're like, oh man, score. I totally would have paid more than that, but I don't have to. That's the idea of consumer surplus. And while you are happy about that, there may be other people in that market who are less happy because they're looking at that price and it more closely corresponds with the maximum that they would have paid. 